Hey everyone, Stefan here over at Rotive. Today I want to talk to you about the differences between score and grade. Now, right now you, you can see I'm in my prospect section. You know, we have the name of the prospect, company, score, and grade. So let's talk about score first. So I like to relate score to how much they know about your company, you know, how engaged they are, you know, with your marketing efforts, you know, are they opening your emails? Are they downloading files? Are they filling out forms? going to landing pages, attending webinars, right? So on and so forth. When it comes to those types of activities, they're gonna get a certain numerical value. Now, if somebody has a high score, you know, right off the bat, that's pretty much gonna let me know, you know, that they know a lot about our company. And, and obviously with a high score, that has to be some degree of interest with your products and services, right? So you can see Wendy right here has a score of 650. That's gonna let me know that Wendy is constantly engaging with our marketing efforts, right? She's always opening up emails. She's clicking the links in the emails that go to landing pages. Maybe she's filling out a bunch of forms, you know, for just somebody to contact her, or maybe even for gated content to have those forms. Maybe she's also engaging in, in social media posts or attending webinars, right? So on and so forth. Now, when it comes to score, there is no you know, ceiling, needless to say, you know, there's no cap on how high you can go. There's no cap on how low you can go, right? It can go as negative as you want. It can go as high as you want. When it comes to score, a lot of people like to use score to determine a marketing qualified lead threshold within your Pardot instance. And I mean, that could be any number, just whatever you decide on internally, because, you know, a big concept of how you utilize Pardot is, you know, you want to qualify these records within Pardot before we send them over to Salesforce, right? We just don't want to send every, you know, prospect in Pardot over to Salesforce, whatever we want. We'd much rather like to qualify those prospects. That way we can help our sales reps on the sales cloud side have an increased chance of closing on those individuals. And of course you can do this with automation rules, right? It, the automation rule would say if prospect score is greater than, and then you determine what your threshold is, you could have an action that would say assign to user. So whenever somebody reaches that threshold, they'll be assigned, then they'll go over to Salesforce as a lead, thus far, you know, creating that marketing qualified lead. Also, another thing with score, if you wanted to change the values for certain activities, you're gonna do that in your Pardot settings area. So if I go into Pardot settings, on the left-hand side, automation settings, and then just click scoring. So if I scroll down a little bit, you have your scoring rules section. So these are the score rules by default, just out of the box in every brand new Pardot instance, right? Custom redirect click, three points. Email open, zero points. File access, three points, right? So on and so forth. You can change these values to whatever you want them to represent. So if I go in the top right-hand corner, I'm gonna see this button that says edit scoring rules. If you go ahead and click that, then you get your dropdown of available activities. So since email open was zero by default, let's just say I wanna give them one point, right? And then of course, a good piece of advice, leave that as a just score on the very first email open. That way they're not continuously receiving one point every time they reopen the email. Now, something very important to know about these scoring rule changes, anytime you make a change, that change is retroactive. So whenever, you know, we're doing implementations with brand new, you know, clients that are introduced to Pardot. I always recommend to them to figure out a scoring methodology early in your Pardot instance, and then just stick with it throughout the entire course. Because again, these changes are retroactive. If you have these default score values for, let's just say a year, and then you decide you want to start changing stuff, it's going to affect everybody that has done that activity whenever you make that change. So their score will change. It it could be drastically. So again, just try and figure out that methodology early and then just stick with it. Now, again, we've been talking about score. So score is letting you know how much they know about you, how interested they are, you know, how, how, how often they're interacting, but you also have scoring categories, right? And scoring categories come with the advanced version of Pardot and the plus version of Pardot. But scoring categories, these are going to let you know the interest level in a specific product line or service line that you guys offer within your company. So you can see here, I've created three scoring categories, right? One for product A, one for product B, one for product C. And I also have uh, separate folders for them as well. So a product A folder, product B folder, product C folder. Now, whenever I start creating marketing content pertaining to a specific product, 
I'm going to choose that folder for that marketing asset to live in. If I want to create an email that's going to talk all about product A, whenever I create that email, I'm going to choose the product A folder, right? If I want to create a landing page that's going to have a whole bunch of product B content on it, whenever I create that landing page, I'm going to choose the product B folder for that asset to live in, right? And so on and so forth. Any custom links, any white papers, um, anything associated with the product, I'm going to choose that specific folder for it to reside in. Now, what this means is whenever somebody has interacted with a marketing asset that is in these folders that have a scoring category on it, they're going to receive a scoring category score. Okay. And that is different from your overall score. So if I go into a prospect's record, let's just say mine, for example, you have the insight section and right here it's showing the overall score and that's everything that I have done to receive a numerical value. All the forms I filled out, all the landing pages I've been to, all the website visits, you know, so on and so forth. And then I have different scoring category scores because I've interacted with those marketing assets that are in those different folders, right? So here you have different scores, right? Product B, I have a score of 258. Product A, 100. Product C, 50. This right here is letting us know a specific interest in a product or service that you guys offer, okay? So you can tell right off the bat that, you know, I'm far more interested in product B than I am in product A and in product C, right? So product C, maybe I filled out a form to know about it. Product A, you know, maybe I, I filled out two forms or, you know, whatever amount of activities. But you can tell I'm way more interested in product B stuff rather than product A and C. So, I mean, this can help your sales reps. This can help you guys as marketers as well. That way you know what content to, you know, serve this person in the near future and where their interest really lies. Now, something to know about the scoring categories, these numbers, they're not going to add up to the overall score, right? Because you can add, you know, different numerical values for for scoring category, marketing assets, right? With, you know, completion actions, with automation rules, you know, hopefully you guys, you know, hopefully you guys know about that already, but that is really the difference between somebody's overall score and their scoring category score. So you can see what, you know, specific product line or service line that they're more interested in that'll help your marketing efforts in the future. So again, just to do a quick recap, score is letting them, letting you know, you know, how much they're interacting, what's their engagement with, with your marketing assets and, and how much they know about you guys. Okay. Now back into our prospect section, let's talk about grade. Now grade is a bit different, right? We're going off of that grading, grading scale that we're all used to, you know, A, A plus, A minus, B, B plus, B minus, so on and so forth. Uh, grade is going to let you know, is this person the right fit for our company, right? Does this person fit the profile that we're really looking to speak for, with at that company? Okay. Now you're going to get situations like this all the time. If you, you know, actually use grading. And what I'm talking about is if somebody has a super high score, like Wendy, you can tell that she's engaging in our content all the time and she might be super interested in us. But the profile that is grading Wendy pretty much lets us know that she's, you know, not the person that we need to be speaking with at that company, right? Or she doesn't fit the buying persona that we're really looking for. So this happens, you know, quite often. Now, if we're taking a look at somebody else, you know, my, you know, test record, for example, 361, and I have an A minus, then I'm far more interested in this individual rather than Wendy, considering the score is, it's a good score, right? 361. That's a lot of interaction, but also the profile is letting me that this person, you know, looks like the, the, the person we're supposed to speak with at this company. If I go into my record and go into the profile tab, I can see what I'm being graded on and how I'm matching the criteria that I find most important in a prospect. Okay. So you can see the criteria in the default profile is location, job title, industry, department, company size, right? And these are all being adjusted by two thirds of a letter. So, you know, location gave myself a thumbs up. Let's just say, you know, you like the fact that this person lives in Texas, right? Job title, let's just say I'm a CEO. That's another thing that you value within a prospect. The industry, I'm in the medical industry, right? For an example, you know, you like these things. Okay. 
Now here it's letting us know, you know, does this person match the criteria that we're looking for within a company? And again, that could be based off of basic demographic information, you know, city, state, job title, you know, location, just as a broader term, it could be even be custom as well, right? Is this, is this person, you know, a buyer, is this person a seller? You know, what exactly do they do for the company? That's where you set that up within the profile itself. So if I go into profiles, click into the default one, click edit, here's where you can lay out that criteria, right? And as you can see, it's a text box. So I can literally type in whatever I want that criteria to be. The biggest thing to understand is these criteria need to match up to a field on a prospect's record to grade them on, right? So for these default ones, you know, industry, that's pretty simple because that matches up to the industry field, like the default field. Location, it's a pretty broad criteria because location can be matched up to state, to city, to zip code, to country, et cetera. Uh, job title matches up to job title, department to department as well. So again, you can label out whatever you want it to say. Just make sure that matches up to a data point on a prospect's record to grade them on. And then you specify the grade adjustment, right? How important is this criteria to you when it comes to grading people? Is it, you know, the most important by one whole letter change? Two thirds of a change, sort of important. One third of a change, you know, not really that important. And again, the reason it's in thirds is because we go by that basic grading system that we're, you know, all used to A minus, A plus A, B minus, B plus B, so on and so forth. Now, there are a couple of different ways in which you can grade people. You could do it the manual way, which is going into a prospect's record, like I showed you earlier, and essentially giving up them the thumbs up and thumbs down within the profile tab. Now, obviously that's tedious, you know, we're in a marketing automation tool, so let's, you know, create some type of automation that would, you know, do the work for us. That's where you create automation rules. So if I go into automations, automation rules, and create a new one. And let's do, uh, you know, location, for example, location grading, Texas prospects, right? So I'm going to create a rule that's going to grade people that live in the state of Texas. And I want that grade to go up because that's what I value people that live in Texas. Scrolling down within your rule section, here's where you determine that criteria that you're looking for. So prospect default field, let's go to state. We'll say is Texas, spell it out add a semicolon and abbreviate it just so I can, I, I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody that does have that Texas value, whether it be abbreviated or spelled out is going to be graded accordingly. And then the action, we'll go ahead and select change profile criteria. The first drop down is letting you choose the profile of which prospects you want to grade, right? So the only one we have is the default one. The next drop down is letting you choose the criteria that we're using to grade on, right? So since we're doing state, that matches up to the location criteria. The last drop down is letting you choose, you know, how their grade is going to be affected. Is this a automation that's going to give them an increase in their grade or is it going to be a decrease, right? Do we want it to go down? I want this to go up. So I'm going to choose matches, right? So matches is going to mean the green thumbs up that we saw earlier within the profile tab of a prospect's record does not match is going to be the thumbs down, right? And not known means nothing is happening to their grade, but again, we're doing matches and then I'll go ahead and cl click create automation rule. So remember these automation rules are designed to, you know, continuously evaluate your prospects, even as you continue to you know, import new data, if people are coming in through filling out forms or they're coming in through the Salesforce connector, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This is gonna constantly evaluate all of your prospects within Parta. So it's you know, pretty much a, a set it and forget it type of rule and it's gonna grade everybody. So those are the biggest differences between scoring and grading. Again, just a quick recap, score is letting you know how, you know, how much this person knows about you guys you know, how much they're interacting with your marketing efforts, opening emails, going to your website, going to landing pages, downloading files, so on and so forth. Grade is going to let you know, does this person look like the right fit, right? Is this the right person that we're supposed to be speaking with at this company? 
Um, and again, you're going to get situations like we're seeing like this all the time. You know, there could be somebody that, you know, is constantly interacting with our stuff, but they don't have a grade, right? And this is something to note too. Every new person will always start with a D. You know, if they're if they're just brought into Pardot, if you if they have a blank for a grade, that really means they have a D. Now it's whenever that their grade changes, that's when it'll show the grade. So if they match an automation rule, well now their that now their grade is going to show. You know, determining if it's a you know rule increasing their grade or decreasing it, it'll show what it's going to be. But everybody that doesn't have a grade, that really means that they have a D for a grade. Everyone starts off with a D. And then again, you know, there's there's situations like you know somebody has a really high score, but they have a really low grade. Someone has a decent score and they have an awesome grade, right? So just based off of those two, you know, qualifying parameters, that's where you'll you know move forward. You know, do we want to reach out to that person? Do we want to you know get rid of that person within our database? How do we want to move accordingly, right? So that is the biggest difference between score and grade. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us.